<laughs> All right. Uh, uh, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Doyle Bueller, and this is the Wiki Brands Collective Webcast, the Signal Series, episode number two. And I'm here with Sean Moffat from Wiki Brands as well. And uh, Signals is our monthly preview of what's going on inside Wiki Brands and the world at large. No topic is too large to cover, and some sneak peeks on what's going on with the key Wiki Brands projects. So, welcome to the program, Sean. Ho, ho, ho. This is our Christmas <laughs> show. Uh, yeah. Like, we've only done two Signals episodes so far, but it's great to have a theme on a second show. So, yeah, absolutely. No, perfect. So, quickly, what's Wiki Brands and what's the Wiki Brands Collective? Wiki Brands is upsetting the apple cart of the professional services game. That's what we do. So uh, we've taken a group of really wickedly smart experts that are all experienced and at the top of their game and whatever they do, digital transformation, future proofing, and we say, great, work with us for a little bit and we will out Deloitte you, we will out publicist you, we will out sapient you. And that's what we do in a nutshell. Fantastic. Yeah, some really smart people. We just had another discussion earlier about some of the meta trends that are that uh, Wiki Brands has identified, which are really, really cool. So that's on another episode. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I think uh, we like to do these as kind of almost a preview for what's going up. So I thought we'd uh, do a riff on the 12 days of Christmas and talk about 12 things, six things yeah. that are happening out there in the industry, six things that are happening inside Wiki Brands. How's that? Oh. That that sounds perfect, and you you you're obviously well placed because you have a Christmas tree in the background. So I I, a, I looked at this entire here, building but... and found the one that was up already. So somebody's being really diligent about their their holiday celebrating yeah. here. I'm just curious because it's not even December yet. When did that thing go up? I don't know. You know what? This is like the retail season here, where once the Halloween stuff goes, uh, you know, down, all of a sudden Christmas goes up. So yeah, well, true. So are you going to sing this then? The twelve days. Have yourself uh, transformation. There. Oh, wrong song. Uh, <laughs> first, day. I don't know all of them though. That's my problem. At around ten or nine, I start to uh, Lords a leaping. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's that's an interesting song. I have no idea where that came from, but yeah, Actually, well, let's I, skip the just, singing. On a, on a strange sidebar, I did do some research on Wikipedia, and you know how there's those the twelve different things. They've changed about twenty to twenty five separate times over the years. Uh, oh, really? I, I guess there's some religious overtones to all this stuff. Um, so if you are interested in geeking out on the twelve days of Christmas, jump on the Wikipedia posting because uh, I was marveling at why did things need to change uh, so often. So. <laughs> Don't know. Well, I'm curious how they even came up with that. So 12 days of transformation. Let's go. Number 12. Number 12. Um, this is fresh. Uh, so Cyber Monday, just finished Black Friday, this kind of retail yeah. tradition that kind of misses Canada a little bit because we have a Thanksgiving that's a month earlier. Um, yeah. But if you look at the numbers, three big conclusions. 19% up versus last year. So Cyber Monday which is kind of the online sales that really functions as the key holiday, kind of if there's one day on the holiday that you're buying stuff online, it's up 19% versus last year. So it's a real indication of online, if we haven't looked at it already, is really taking hold. Two other interesting ones, it seems like in the US, Thanksgiving is actually taking hold more than Black Friday. Like mm -hmm. It looks like Black Friday is fading into the background as most people go, yeah, you know, there's a number of retailers this year that, that decided to open on Thanksgiving. I think they had a policy of yeah. not opening. They're open now. So their okay. sales on Thanksgiving were about as much as Black Friday. And then wow. finally, a lot of the online sales were happening in mobile, which is another trend that we're seeing, obviously. I personally yeah. love shopping on my laptop just because I can see a bigger screen. People are yeah. very comfortable shopping on mobile. I like using this finger <laughs> with my mouth. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, <laughs> um, I've actually noticed this is one really interesting thing is that all of this is is shifting overseas as well. Um, you know, companies in the UK and companies in Australia, like they're really talking about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, all that. So they're making it a big event because I think they're seeing US and Canada, well, mostly the US. Obviously, there's some filtering through, but they're seeing the US going, hey, you know what? This is great for commerce. But they've kind of toned that down because now they're also looking at Small Business Saturday where it's not so much grab those TVs from all the biggest retailers across the country. It's like, how can you support a small business as well? So 
very interesting, I think, as we get into this uh, over the years as well, we'll probably see more of that shifting of how can companies around the world sort of capitalize on this? Well, and no, if you, and you're in retail, let's be honest, Doyle, if you're in retail, aren't you going to grasp for any straw right now that yeah. has a glimmer of hope for your business? Um, Absolutely, it's, yeah. If you had $10 right now and I said invest it somewhere, I don't think you would probably spend many of those cents in a retail universe. So Yeah. And I actually had somebody from the UK wish me a Thanksgiving and it's like, it took me a while going, wait a sec, what? No, <laughs> that's not right. You can't do that. <laughs> no, it doesn't man. make sense. UK doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving and neither does Australia, but apparently we do know. So, all right, cool. So um, 12 Cyber Mondays dancing, 11 Microsoft Lords a leaping. I wouldn't want to send, say that one very, very fast. <laughs> What's that one? <laughs> uh, I'm fascinated by this. Like usually this is Newton's law of business. Like uh, Microsoft was the number one valued company back in 2002. I think they took over from Exxon. So they were known back then as being the most valuable company. They had a good two or three year ride and then they lost their title. Well, guess what? Guess who's the most valued company yet again? It's Microsoft. They're back. Microsoft, yeah. Almost quietly, right? Because we've kind of like there wasn't, you know, yeah, there wasn't any press about it. It was just suddenly it's like, oh, by the way. <laughs> so I think two conclusions. One, I mean, uh, who have they taken over from, or at least are in this back and forth battle? It's Apple, and uh, I think there is a learning. Once you hit a one trillion dollar mark in terms of valuation in your company. Every single one of those companies goes back down. So it's like, it's almost like the large, you're almost get to a point of being too large where you got to fail, um, which is fascinating from just a uh, kind of the glass ceiling of business. Um, but from a Microsoft standpoint, good for them, right? Like, I think they've really pivoted their business model to be less about selling you stuff within your operating system and more getting you on a subscription model where you're paying Microsoft 12 months year round in terms of whatever yeah. stuff they're producing. So what big thing is Microsoft going to do in 2019 then? It's a good question, right? Like um, I've flagged them for a couple of different things. Um, and it's funny, even when I look at the top six tech companies, there's a lot of these acronyms that people come up with like FANG or Manga. Like, mm -hmm. And Microsoft, yeah. I always look at them as being on the outside of those five or six companies. But I should yeah, really yeah. be recalibrating. Um, I know they have a lot of AR stuff that's in the wings. I'm fascinated with all of their hollow, uh, hollow deck stuff. Um, uh, that's yeah, probably cool. three or four years from hitting the mass market. But, um, yeah, I, I'm a little bit less sure. I'm, I'm quite candidly surprised that they're back to being the biggest valued company again. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's my theory for Microsoft. Sure. What if they buy a company like WeWork? Mm. So then they become... They already only got sort of the online business networking. And if they were to say purchase a company like WeWork, who, by the way, owns Eventbrite, doesn't that tie a lot of pieces together for them? I've always thought, man, you know what? That's That hurts my brain um, just because <laughs> uh, that could be an interesting breakup model. I think the challenge that I've seen that they would probably say they wouldn't do that is it's we work as a very tough to scale model because you're dealing with live physical buildings, lease arrangements, things that Microsoft probably might take a reticent eye to. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll wait and see what happens. But That'd cool. So now though, Doyle. Good to yeah. good rumor mill. <laughs> well, it started here. <laughs> I own the office, right? Their ultimate goal is own the office for business, and they can do that if they um, uh, jump in with the the um, uh, co working space. But anyway, number yeah. ten: Chinese gene editing scientists are drumming. <laughs> you know, when you ask these questions and you go, "Do you feel like technology is an enabler for the future and is great and is good for social good, or is it bad?" This is one of these situations where I think you quickly go down the road of, "Oh my God, technology can be bad." So these Chinese doctors um, have done for the first time in the world, gene edited two new babies. They, they suspect yeah. there might be a third one out there. Um, they've done it for good reasons. They wanted to gene edit. So HIV, these babies were HIV resistant. Don't know why yeah. they did it. Don't know their motivation. But they were quite proud about it at their press conference. And I was looking at it going, are we now in an era of creating kind of Toys R Us meets uh, your baby where you're just choosing what your baby should look like? Uh, or feel like, or what attributes they should have. 
And it just brings up a whole Pandora's box of challenges in terms of just what are the ethics involved? Uh, you know, when we look at the Olympic Games, you know, 20 years from now, we'll be looking at these people going, it's not steroids anymore. Is it, have they been gene edited to the point where, you know, can we even evaluate somebody's performance versus yeah, another? Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, we so, it's a weird world we're in. Sounds like a great episode for Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> so was this confirmed though? Or do you think it might be a hoax? Uh, I think I think the technology is already there. Like I think there's been a number of North American medical practitioners that said, "Look, this could happen now." Uh, I think yeah. we've we've prudently put the brakes on just because we don't know where it's going to go. Uh, this group of doctors, you kind of went full speed ahead and said, "Let's be the first. So they either think they're being the Neil Armstrongs of gene editing, or um, they're just opening up a box that's going to be really, really tough to push back in again, which is the yeah. challenge for a lot of the technologies that we're talking about, like AI, the same thing. Enormous good can come of it. Enormous um, potential threats can come from it too. Yeah, definitely. Proceed with caution on that one. Um, nine slackers slacking. <laughs> so anybody that knows me knows I love Slack. Uh, their founder is yeah. actually Canadian, so I think there's probably a penchant for liking them. Uh, oh, fantastic. I didn't and, know that. And uh, yeah, it was the same guy that introduced Flickr. Stuart Butterfield is the guy oh, okay. in charge of Slack. So, um, okay. and he's from BC. Um, so there's a bit of a patriotic sentiment there, but the product works. Um, the moment it gets its fingerprints inside a company, it all of a sudden spreads. So it's a fascinating corporate word of mouth phenomenon in terms of Slack and how it grows within environments. And this week, uh, they showed NASA landing a new vehicle on Mars, which was interesting in and of itself. But one of the things that people noticed was one of the engineers in NASA control had an open Slack window, and he was messaging back and forth with his engineering buddies. Uh, and so you look at a place like uh, NASA, and they, they did the backstory on it where there's like 115 buildings of NASA. One building of engineers adopted Slack, and all of a sudden, without even sanctions from CIOs, it kind of spread like wildfire through their workplace. So um, even though Microsoft's got a free product competing against Slack, once Slack is in your world, it's really tough uh, and sticky to um, to get out of it. So um, so I'm a big bull on um, Slack in terms of its future, in terms of its growth. And NASA's kind of proving it to me once again that you know even at the highest levels of science, Slack is actually helping people collaborate Wow. Yeah, that's fascinating. So I'm wondering if the NASA will use that for um, uh, communicate, c communicating with the lander down the road. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Maybe uh, when the droids uh, rule us, they'll be also yeah. on Slack. I'm not too sure. Yeah. All right. So number eight, eight Amazon blockchains are milking. What so, is that? <laughs> everybody always seems to be like re resistant to blockchain. It's almost like, please do not go to the dark side. Uh, and so Amazon said that last year. They said they're not really interested or they're, they're going to soft pedal their way in a blockchain. Lo and behold, yeah. this week they just came out and said, yep, yeah, we've got a, kind of a blockchain as a service that we're going to offer people. Uh, this in spite of an environment right now where, you know, you look at most blockchain valuations, they've gone down, down, down. Uh, it's not the rapidly interesting place to invest in at least this month based on some of the valuations that have come out. But they've come out and said, look, this is going to be a big part of the future. We need to be part of it. And so they've they've thrown their hat in the game. So it's just a platform that basically businesses can decide how to use blockchain for an application or something like that. Is that is that right? I'm going to tear through it. You know what? I caught the headline uh, candidly. So okay. uh, And I, yeah. I heard the mea culpa from one of the uh, people that was uh, introducing it saying like, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different than last year where we might have had different okay. blinders on. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because there's obviously a lot of risk. I mean, look, blockchain here is to stay, you know, regardless of whether Amazon jumps on board. It's just a matter of, I think, seeing, you know, how do business actually use it? How can they actually make uh, that process and that journey a little bit easier with it? But That's the big thing, Doyle. Like, just uh, the people that are in the blockchain game net right now, I don't know if they're going to be the same people five years from now because we need people yeah. in this world that know how to take this really interesting piece of technology and conceptually just this interesting ledger system that allows no middleman to be involved and put it into a business slash societal context because i don't think those two people are the same people right now 
No, they're not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. That one's going to be exciting. So, number seven, seven bad years of swimming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was my quirky one. I do, ran across do, this. Do and you I, wear your Speedo when you swim first, John? <laughs> I do not. I wear the long shorts as most good, prudent oh, people okay. should. All right. Uh, good. But I get the sense that people aren't entirely in affection with their politics uh, that's running in their world, whatever it may be. They're not happy with the media that surrounds them. There's a very low trust factor. People feel kind of a little bit bummed about life right now. So here's your silver ray of light. Um, the scientists have looked at what was the worst year in history over the last 2,000 some odd years, and they've landed on yeah. 586 AD. That was a really bad year to be around. Um, there was a huge volcano over Iceland. Essentially, it froze most of the northern hemisphere. Most of your crops didn't uh, didn't live. All of a sudden, people started to starve. Uh, and lo and behold, six years later, the bubonic plague came up. Uh, and they've actually looked at, very uh, interestingly, snow samples and ice samples from all the way back. For about 100 years, we yeah. stopped having industry on planet Earth. So there was some crude forms of industry where they could see what was in the pollutants in the environment. Uh, this kind of volcano followed by the plague stopped and arrested human development for about a hundred years before they started to see some of that industrial activity pop up again in wow. ice samples. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. And, and 2018 isn't as bad as that. So, Hey, that's a plus. No, something <laughs> to feel good about right no, now. No bubonic plague at least. <laughs> no, no. I go for those small little silver linings you. Yeah, exactly. So a little, little bubble of uh, positivity with 2018. <laughs> yeah. No, perfect. We all need it. Yeah. Uh, number six, six keynotes keynoting. All right, so this is where we get into some of our selfishly wiki brand stuff, but I think some of the stuff is broadly interesting. The background on the six keynotes keynoting was I had a discussion with the Speakers Bureau and I said, we have 120 keynotes inside our wiki brands collective. Uh, we think it's a great thing to individually support us or look at uh, theming days around our keynotes. And her point was, um, that's great. Uh, it, seems like really interesting, but it could be too much for me. I just like to get celebrities uh, placed wherever they need to go. So if it's a famous astronaut or musician, that's her business. And so to settle an argument, we put out a survey and we said, look, here are 17 questions about what makes for a great business keynote. And thankfully, thankfully, some of my um, thoughts ahead of time were coming true, at least in the early returns on the survey. So I'll post the link to the survey. We're, we're going to keep it open for a while. But the interesting thing, uh, two, I found interesting. One, what are the most popular business topics um, that people uh, want to hear about in keynotes? Uh, first one was innovation in the future, which is what Wikibrands, you and me, are all about. That was number yeah. one. Number two was tech and digital. So I feel yeah. like, oh my God, I am in the sweet spot. You're in the sweet spot. A uh, number of us are in the same sweet spot of this is the stuff that audiences are craving for. The second thing was, I'd like to think that we have some substance behind what we say. The number one thing people are looking for in their keynote presentations delivered by you know popular speakers is perspective. They want to see a wider perspective on their world at large. Somebody that looks at stuff and looks at it in a creative, different type of way. Um, and the last thing people want to see is somebody that has just got some kind of shtick, some type of performance, some type right. of... I'm going to juggle <laughs> as I mention stuff or do really hyper, <laughs> like let's walk over the coals together here. So yeah, I was yeah. edified by the fact that audiences like what we like and want to have substantive people presenting to them. So, um, so yeah, early returns, but that's what we've heard. Yeah. And I yeah, saw the I saw initial the chart, chart that, that you that put you together. Put together. Yeah, it's really, really fast. fast. Um, I actually have, I have the have link a here. Bit oh, cool. Why business. business. Stage, stage act, act. and that's and the survey is that the one you're talking about yeah that's the survey it takes about five minutes to do but i find mm -hmm. um you, you usually get good engagement or you can tell good engagement from people when they're actually putting comments in on stuff mm -hmm. versus just clicking a box so um yeah it seems to be a a, a a lightning rod for some passion that people share uh my personal opinion is not every single keynote needs to sound like a ted talk uh, there is a wide variety of ways to deliver good content. We should be looking at those people, right? So yeah, and not death by PowerPoint either. So no. <laughs> All right. So what are we? What number are we at? Number five. 
five, five business like model five rings. golden business model yeah. rings. Um, we just did this uh, really quirky thing. We introduced a games part to our website. So I love uh, that. That was so much fun. If you jump online, we got a couple. Of, we got a, a spinning wheel where you can choose one of the top thirty emerging technologies. We got a couple of other things, but the one that's really interesting. Um, if you've ever seen March Madness, where they have these brackets of basketball teams all go against each other, and at some point there's two teams in the middle that wore off in the finals, we've done the same thing for business models. We've taken the most yeah. popular 32 business models, and we've said, "You decide what you think are the most interesting business models for the future." And hopefully what we'll come up with is some kind of consensus on, yeah, it's a subscription model, it's a, you know, a freemium model, any of these business models that have come into four now that you know, uh, in, in a lot of respects, technology has enabled a full new set of business models to happen because um, it's just easier to do business nowadays. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun to play too. So as you kind of have to weigh each one against each other, it's like, hmm. <laughs> so I'm curious. Do you remember who who ended up in your finals? Yeah, my finalist was um, a customize it mass customization. <laughs> there you go. That makes sense. That could, your, yeah, that could probably be them. because one of my early startups in 2002 was mass customization. So. <laughs> that's awesome. No, I didn't yeah. know you had already gone through it. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the link to get to that one is wiki browncom slash transformation games. Awesome. Um, so head on over and, and uh, complete that one as well. Number four, scaling and growth hens. Now hens, where did hens come from? That That's not part of the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, maybe it's or called chooks, birds. Chooks, as they say in Australia. I think <laughs> it's called birds, maybe. There's no okay. French hens is number three, I think. So oh, I would yeah. put it in place. Uh, okay. <laughs> so scaling growth, uh, what do we have? Uh, we got a couple of different th things going on here. One, uh, we did a webcast, as you recall, we did a webcast on scale and growth uh, a couple weeks ago. So that's one thing that we have online. The second thing is we've got a really wickedly smart, uh, group of eight people that are doing the same thing that we've done for other research. By December 14th, we're launching a full ensuite of research against scale companies and practices. And finally, we've built a workshop around this. So we've built a, what we've called a 10C workshop. So there's 10 different Cs that scaling companies should really be interested in. And candidly, as a company, as a collective, you know, our real sweet spot is startups are interesting, um, but they're maybe too young at certain times for us. Corporates are really interesting too, but they've got their incumbent agencies and whatever. If we're a disruptor, the best group of people we're going to be dealing with are scale companies that let's say have more than 15 people and maybe have more than $7 million of revenue and are really growing fast and trying to become a corporate. That's the people that we get passionate about working with and we think our collective can really help. So scale and growth all over the place, webcast, that's research, the, workshop. Yeah, that's the sweet spot. I agree. As they say. All right, number three, th three meta trend hens french you hens. don't like the notion of it hens. doesn't rhyme I, i'm like we, we need to have something that rhymes here <laughs> <laughs> oh man well we just half an hour before we jumped on this call we yeah. did a full um kind mm -hmm. of webcast with jill and baron two other members of our collective on metatrends yeah. and we cycled that was, that was amazing wow it was it's, it's um you know i think the critique of metatrends is how do you apply them to your day-to-day -day business? And, yeah. and I think that's a fair commentary, but I do think if you're planning on an annual basis or if you're in a business where planning more than two years out is important, knowing where the big tides are, are, are um, pulling you uh, is probably a good thing to know. And so this was our fairly rigorous attempt at getting at what are the top 30 drivers that are going to change your world over the next decade. We rank them. Uh, we started with a list of 60, we got down to 30, we ranked them, and uh, we think it stands up to a lot of scrutiny, and I think, uh, you know, we're now at the end of the year, a perfect kind of um, panacea for, I want to look out in the future, I want to do an innovation offsite, who can I look at in terms of the 30 things that are going to change my life? Oh, yeah. Wikibrands has built this um, kind of interesting menagerie of, um, of trends that might be my, uh, my solution. Yeah, absolutely. 
to help help guide you down that road, which can obviously be overwhelming as well. And yeah. where can they find the research? Do we have a link uh, for that? Or? We do not because we haven't released the research yet. Okay. We, okay. Uh, yeah. we they can look online to look for our workshop. Uh, it's in kind of what we do, I think, on our website. But yeah. uh, the workshop's going to be launched December fourteenth. Perfect. Excellent. So to reinvent brand doves, brand doves. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not rolling off. I mean, this no, Christmas theme seems so good conceptually. Um, I need to get a Christmas tree, I guess. You I say had, it better. I had, I had a real touchstone moment this week where it's just, I looked at when our book, uh, Wiki Brands, originally went on sale. Uh, yeah. Come December 29th, this will be our eighth year that we had oh, Wiki wow. Brands out into market. So um, we have retooled it, relooked at it. Uh, same principles. It's the same 12 reasons in terms of how you build and maintain brands. But we've supported it with a full ensuite of new research, new cases, and a new workshop that we've just introduced online as well. So um, in the same place you could find the scale workshop, we've uh, retooled our branding workshop. So if you're looking at reinventing your brand, we've got a completely fresh way of looking at it with the same principles that got us kind of famous eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And we've got the link wiki-brands.com slash reinvent-brands. So good. As well. You're on All the All right. Board. So the last one you're going to have to sing. <laughs> a five, golden red, four, two, a and, partridge. A, and a corporate <laughs> innovation playbook in a pear tree. There you go. <laughs> Very baritone of me. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, do you want me to explain this or did the singing just carry this off? No, I, I think we need your your wise words of wisdom. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, without the pros, this is probably the thing that I've sweated out the most over the last three months. Uh, we, we're trying to tackle a question that seems to have flummoxed even the smartest of us in the corporate world um, how to do innovation within large companies well. Uh, there's a ton of information nowadays on startup innovation, uh, but corporate innovation, we've talked about it for 60 years. Um, people tend to not be very good at it. Uh, if you look at mm -hmm. some executive boards, they say of the 23 core functions that a company does, innovation is ranked number 18, which is not a good grading. So we thought to ourselves, let's focus on the best of us. Let's focus on interviewing the top 40 practitioners. Let's survey 250 experts and see what the best innovators in corporate landscapes have to say about current practices. What are the best ones? What are people using? What are the best uh, indicators of success? And then we've got a second survey. We had so much work done on this so that we built a second survey around future foresight. So where is innovation and in business models going in the future? So, um, you know, we've got you know, come February when we get all the results back, we will have so much great insight about innovation. I don't want to write another book, but if I needed to, I could probably lean on this research as uh, kind of my focus uh, in terms of, you know, just building an entire case around uh, innovation. And I got to say, we didn't want to build a new business model. There's a ton of different models about how to innovate well. We wanted to study the pragmatic aspects of corporate innovation. So we're we're almost calling it innovation in the wild, where we just want to observe the best see what they're doing and provide valuable tips and techniques for um, for others that want to do it too. Oh, fantastic. And, and so can you let us in on the secret on some of the big insights or? Well, I mean, we're chasing them down, right? Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, I would say the surveys are there online. Uh, I think if you go to wikibrands.com and look up corporate innovation playbook, you'll see those two surveys. You'll have a full background of the 10 people that pulled this thing together and yeah. some of the things that we're going to do with it. And we will have next week a webinar uh, that anybody can sign up for where we'll introduce the results on, I believe the date will be February 17th that we're targeting to uh, release all the results to whoever is interested. Oh, that's fast. Fantastic. And uh, so that's wiki-brands.com slash innovation playbook. Oh man, you're, did you just do that right now? Or it's had I sent there. you a link ahead of time? <laughs> I'm about to be amazed by your your Rain Man like uh, ability to turn things around. Like this, oh yeah, I see it. Okay, it's appearing. 
it's appearing on the screen. <laughs> oh, man. So, so like a, can you go ahead? Go ahead now. <laughs> um, so can you sing all of those in order then? No. No. Flat okay, out, no. No. <laughs> um, but if this is our only engagement with people, I find uh, I love this time of year. Uh, you know, it's Canada. We've got some snow on the ground here, so it, it definitely feels different. Um, anybody that yeah. touches us, both people in our collective, people that just stop by, customers, clients, whoever, I, I really do want to wish them uh, a great holiday season. I know it's early, but you may be watching this on December 22nd. So uh, with all the candor that I can muster right now for Christmas in late November, <laughs> uh, I do want to wish uh, everybody that touches us a really good uh, festive holiday season. Yeah, absolutely. My my, uh, as well for me. And I was looking around for my Santa hat, and it's like, oh, I put my Santa hat away. So, <laughs> and uh, just uh, the one individual I do <laughs> want to pick out and say, Doyle, like this is our sixth uh, webcast together. You being an yeah. absolute blessing in terms of just working. Uh, you know, tech crashes, people don't get back to you on things fast enough. And it's just like somehow you're like this eye in the center of the storm where it's just like, <laughs> we just know it's going to be okay because Doyle's involved. So I, I really want to thank you. And I, uh, I've enjoyed uh, working uh, and expanding our relationship over last year. Oh, well, no, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And and you're the, you're the man with the ideas and the brain. So <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was so true, but uh, I am standing on the shoulders of giants. All right. Well, excellent. So anything else you want to add for signals? There's, I mean, we'll be back in uh, kind of late December or maybe early January talking about what's up for January, but uh, 2019 is going to be uh, amazing for us. Uh, we are yeah, going to have a group of over a hundred people. I'm very interested in seeing uh, Wikibrands extend its tentacles in places like Australia and New Zealand. Yes. Yeah, around the around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Spin the world, put your finger on it, and that's where we're launching next. Yes. Yeah, uh, there we go. But uh, we have uh, we have a lot of interesting things in the hopper, and uh, I just want – I'm naturally collaborative. I want as many people involved. I don't care if you think you're a competitor to me or – um, you know, we've, we've been competitors in the past. I want people involved in what we're doing and we're not shy about sharing all the good inside stuff, um, freely. So, yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's brilliant. And really looking forward to, yeah, continuing to grow this, uh, the wiki brands collective as well. It's been a that's fantastic all, journey so far. That's all I got, but, um, all yeah, right. look forward to more and, uh, and certainly, uh, feel free to hit me or you up in terms of, uh, what future topics we should be talking about on this webcast. Yeah, absolutely. Give us some ideas, ask some questions, all that good stuff. And if you enjoyed this, uh, please feel free to share or uh, send it around to your community as well. So excellent. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for joining Wikibrands uh, Signals webcast uh, number two for December. My name is Doyle Bueller and the wonderful guest is uh, Sean Moffat. Go to wiki, wiki-brands.com slash webcast. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho.